The Lord be with you. Good morning, and welcome to this service of morning prayer from St. James Church, Athboy, on this first Sunday of Lent. Wherever you may be watching, you are most welcome to join us in this act of worship. Our first hymn reminds us of God's love and forgiveness. Number 319, Father of Heaven, whose love profound. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord, who is full of compassion and mercy, and confess our sins in penitence and faith. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth will proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Our canticle is Saviour of the World.
first reading this morning is taken from Genesis 9, beginning at verse 8. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is a sign of the covenant that I make between me and you, and every living creature that is with you, for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. Our psalm today is number 25, reading from verses 1 to 9. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Let, let none who look to you be put to shame, but let the treacherous be shamed and frustrated. Make me to know, know your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you have I hoped all the day long. Remember, Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions, but think on me in your goodness, O Lord, according to your steadfast love. Gracious and upright is the Lord, therefore shall he teach sinners in the way. He will guide the humble in doing right and teach his way to the lowly. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth to those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We listen to our second scripture reading. Our second reading this morning is taken from Mark 1, beginning at verse 9. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee, and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for forty days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent, and believe in the good news. This is the word of the Lord. May my words and our thoughts be in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There is a sense of isolation and desolation which comes across strongly in St. Mark's 
very brief description of our Lord's temptation in the wilderness. Mark does not go into the detail of the actual temptations as Matthew and Luke did, but his brief narrative gives us a sense of what it was like. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and angels waited on him. Perhaps we can identify with that isolation more readily because of the experience of lockdown, which has not been easy. The Judean wilderness is the most desolate landscape imaginable. Dry, arid, rocky terrain stretches as far as the eye can see and beyond. One would wonder how anything or anyone could survive there. This is where Jesus went alone for over a month. But survival is possible. When the rains fall, they form little rivulets which flow into the crevices in the rock, allowing very sparse vegetation to grow there. When I was there some years ago, I saw Bedouin herders leading their goats to find sparse grazing places. Perhaps this is how Jesus found the food and water to endure and survive in the wilderness. We may find lockdown hard and relentless, but if we look like the vegetation that survives in the crevices, there are things for which we can be thankful. The kindness of the person who makes the telephone call, the signs of God's creation in spring all around us, and the birds that come to the feeders, and in God's word, which brings us comfort and hope. Jesus was tempted by Satan in the wilderness. We know from Matthew and Luke that those temptations were not so much to do the wrong thing, but not to do the right thing. He was tempted not to follow the course set by his heavenly Father. When things get us down and we may feel despondent, it's easy to give in to the temptation not to do the right thing. This may be the little thing, like calling a lonely person. I'll do it later. And then later comes, and there's something else that diverts us. Or it may be the bigger things. We read and hear about the suffering of innocent people around the world. Children starving as a result of war in Yemen. Refugees in Ethiopia, South Sudan, and so many parts of the world. We think, how could we possibly affect that situation? And so we're, we are inclined to do nothing at all. But we could respond to appeals for emergency relief and donate to aid agencies. Or we hear the voice of racism and extremism and we stay silent, not challenging what we know to be wrong, even if it was only said in jest. It's easy not to do the right thing. Our Lord overcame the temptation by relying on the words of Scripture, which had formed and molded him to prepare him for the work ahead. We too can find strength and inspiration from God's word, to help us to care and to do the right thing. The wilderness can be baking hot in the daytime, but bitterly cold at night. Huddling for warmth in a rocky cave at night, Jesus would have heard the prowling of wild animals. It is often at the dead of night that our worst fears are realized and our life can seem very bleak. Mark tells us that angels waited on the Lord. 
He knew God's presence with him, and he remembered the words of assurance he received at his baptism. You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. It is in those bleaker moments that we can find strength in the promises of God, like the rainbow which assured Noah of God's never-ending love. As we journey through this season of Lent, may you find reason for thankfulness, comfort from God's presence, inspiration and strength in his word. Amen. Our next hymn is number 207, 40 Days and 40 Nights. Let us affirm our faith, saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen.
Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Collect for the first Sunday in Lent. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ fasted forty days in the wilderness, and was tempted as we are, yet without sin, Give us grace to discipline ourselves in obedience to your spirit. And as you know our weakness, so may we know your power to save. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lenten Collect Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord who guides us through the wilderness of temptation, into fellowship with him and with one another. God of love, we pray for your church throughout this holy season of Lent. We pray that Christians everywhere may be renewed in faith and drawn into a closer bond with you and with one another. We pray for this diocese and for Pat our Bishop and for the people of this parish. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are in a wilderness of isolation due to the pandemic, those who have lost jobs and livelihoods, those who work under huge stress and strain in our health service, those who have contracted the virus and those who are in care homes or hospital unable to see their loved ones. Bring healing and hope to all who suffer. We pray for the successful delivery of the vaccination programme. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for people whose land has become wilderness through drought in many parts of Africa. We pray for the many people across the world who have been displaced because of the effects of climate change and who struggle to survive. Strengthen and support the work of Christian aid and agencies who provide relief and support to people in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our homes and loved ones and give thanks for all the blessings of family life. We pray for young people who may be tempted to make wrong choices or take risks. Bless all who provide counselling and support in schools and colleges. We remember those who have no place to call home. Help us to be compassionate and to share what we have with others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are struggling in the wilderness of despair and hopelessness, those who have lost their faith and who cannot face the future. Help them to know that you are with them, that they may find renewed hope and faith in Christ, who is able to help those who are being tested. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are struggling with pain and illness, remembering those who are in hospital or at home and those who are housebound. Help them to know your presence in their pain and grant them your healing touch. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember with thanksgiving our loved ones who have ended their earthly pilgrimage and who rest in your nearer presence. 
Bring us with them to share in the joy of our eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as we journey through Lent, we ask for God's guidance. Go before us, Lord, in all our doings, with your most gracious favour, and further us with your continual help, that in all our works, begun, continued and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name. And finally, by your mercy, attain everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our concluding hymn is number 660, Thine Forever, God of Love. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves and take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you.